On this episode of the Whiskey Tornado, we review Green River Bourbon. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Whiskey Tornado. I'm your host, Lance. Today, we have a budget bourbon review for you. Kind of budget. It's around $35. It is a revived brand. It's one of these revived bourbons. It is Green River Bourbon. Uh, We are talking about 70% corn, 21% rye, 9% malted barley, so a little bit higher malted barley content and it comes to us at 90 proof. Now, before we get into this review, if you wanna see where I've ranked other bourbons in 2022, you can go to whiskeytornado.com. You can see links to our exclusive barrel picks, our merchandise, our Patreon, everything Whiskey Tornado, you can find at whiskeytornado.com. For those of you new to the channel, I will quickly explain our scoring system. We have seven categories. We rank zero to 1.5 being average. The first two categories are handicap. Those are appearance and availability. Then we move on to the nose, palate, finish, body, and value. At the end, we add all those scores up. Any score of three or better is bar worthy. Any score of four or better is bunker worthy. You better buy some extra just in case the bourbon you love is no longer made. All right, with all that being said, let's get into the appearance of Green River Bourbon. All right, guys, I know a lot of you don't think that appearance matters, but these distilleries work hard at their artwork, which is bourbon. And as a marketing major, I feel like that artwork should be represented in the packaging. That being said, it's not as important as what's in the bottle. So we do handicap this category, but let's talk about the appearance of Green River Bourbon. Uh, They did a really fantastic job on this bottle, I think. Uh, You can see it kind of looks a little old timey to me. They didn't go crazy on uh, on the label, just your standard like black label with kind of a copper uh, etching. But I love the details they did on this. They have the uh, the strip that almost looks like a tax strip on there. Of course, it's got the DSP KY10, which I love. Um, It's also on the bottom. I love this part of it. It has a horseshoe. So I think you guys can see that, but I love that horseshoe on the bottom and the entire bottle is in that shape. So I love those little details. Fantastic job on the bottle. Uh, It's not overly crazy, but I still appreciate those little details, those little quirks. Um, So we are going to give it a better than average on a $35 bottle is really good. We are going to give the appearance a 0.6. All right, moving on to availability. Again, this is one of those brands that was revived. I'm not sure how many states it's in, but when I went to Kentucky, it was really easy to find. First liquor store I walked in, had it on the shelf. So I believe distribution is gonna be really good. Right now, we're gonna give it a better than average score of 0.6, but as we go, as distribution increases, I'm sure this is gonna be a one. All right, we're gonna get into the important stuff, the nose, the palate, the finish, the body. And then at the end, we are gonna review this against my current favorite budget bourbon right now that's really easy to find, and that's Evan Williams 1783. Uh, We're gonna see how it stacks up uh, to help us figure out what the value is on this bottle. But let's get into the nose on this Green River bourbon. Oh, the nose is fantastic, super sweet. I think that high malted barley content really helping the sweetness on this. But super like sweet caramel. Sometimes on higher malted barley content uh, bourbons or whiskeys in general, I get a little bit of a grape note. And that's here. Almost like uh, when you open a grape big league chew bag, it's got that dusty grape note. And that's here. You get vanilla, really rich caramel some rickhouse dust which is fantastic on a bottle for this price 
Mm, really nice on the nose. Maybe even uh, maybe even a little bit of clove on there. I'm not getting too many spices. I'm not getting um, you know I'm not getting a lot of cinnamon or anything like that. But I do get this like almost. There used to be this clove gum I used to eat, and I get that on the nose as well. Yeah, a little bit of caramel, vanilla, a little bit of that dustiness, Rickhouse dustiness, a little bit of uh, Big League Chew grape and some clove on the back end of the nose. Really nice. Um, you know, we're going to give we're going to give the nose a 0.6. It's better than average. I like what I'm smelling, especially for a $35 bottle. All right, guys, moving on to the palette. Cheers, everybody. Hmm. That's interesting. Really nice. So the first note I got was like a, like a creamed corn, that sweet cream corn that I was getting on the nose, uh, mixed with caramel. Actually, now that I put those two phrases together, it is like uh, it's like caramel popcorn. That's that's what this is. It's caramel popcorn. I'm gonna take another sip because the it's it's not the finish isn't very long. You, this is really crushable. Yeah, yeah, I nailed that. It is caramel popcorn with some like Rick House dustiness and a little bit of tobacco. <clears throat> and that tobacco note is fantastic. I don't smoke or chew or I don't even like cigars, if I'm being honest. Uh, but I love it when I get a tobacco note and whiskey. And on the finish, there is a nice little tobacco note on there. And again, that like higher malted barley content for me comes off a little bit grapey sometimes. And I get a slight grape note. Um, this is good. It is not going to blow your socks off, but for $35, it is good. It is worth every penny. Um, we're going to give the palate, uh, we're going to give the palate a 0.5. It's, it's a average bourbon, but, um, again, not going to knock your socks off, but I'm not mad at it for $35. Really good for that price point. All right, moving on to the finish. I'm going to take one more sip here. Golly, this is crushable. The more I drink it, the more I actually enjoy it. It is a really good, I don't know if you want to call a $35 bottle a budget bourbon, but man, is it good. It was the way, pr the way uh, prices are going with bourbon, this is killer for $35. Um, the finish is not long. Again, it goes away quick and you want to take another sip and enjoy that like uh, caramel popcorn note. Uh, that I really like with a little bit of tobacco in there and a little bit of Rickhouse dustiness, which I'm digging for a $35 bottle. Um, we're gonna give, we're gonna give the uh, the finish a .4. It's a it's less than average. All right, moving on to the body. I don't know if you guys, I think you can see that. The body's just, um, it's not great. You know, we're at 90 proof, so it's gonna be less than average. We're talking a .4 on the body. Um, it doesn't do a super great job of coating the mouth, not super viscous. So we're gonna give it less than average of 0.4. All right, let's talk about value. So I've got Evan Williams, 1783. This is my current favorite budget bourbon. You're talking 20 to 25 bucks. Um, and I think this has some eight year stuff in it from the rep I talked to, the Heaven Hill rep. Uh, I absolutely love this stuff. So I'm gonna taste it side by side with Green River. Um, I've had this airing out for about 10 minutes. So let's taste it side by side and I'll let you know which one I would rather have for my money. That Evan Williams is, man, if you guys are sleeping on that, don't. They're different. These are two different animals. The Green River with that higher malted barley content has a, you can tell it, it's, it's different. It's unique. Um, has that almost like I don't know how to put it other than like a sour apple or grapey note to it. It's it's definitely different, but um, really unique and really good. Mm, man, that's 1783. Let's taste it. Seventeen eighty three. More peanut forward. I don't know. I don't think it's as complex as the Green River now that I'm tasting them side by side. I 
I might prefer the Green River to 1783. That surprises me. I was ready for 1783 to take this. Man. The finish is longer on Green River than on 1783. 1783 is, is really good. It's got that Rick House. It's got that Heaven Hill nuttiness. Uh, it's got the caramel. Um, but I think the finish on the Green River is actually longer. Man. Mm, that makes me want to bump this value up. Um, shoo, boy. Let me take one more sip here. Yeah, I'm going to put the value at above average on that. I'm going to put the value at a point six. Because I think for $35, you are going to be super thrilled with that. Um, and I think for the palette, I'm going to go a little bit better than average. And I'm going to bump it to a point six. So... That brings our overall score for Green River to a 3.3, making it bar worthy. I don't remember where I put the Evan Williams at, but the Evan Williams was was you know 10 bucks cheaper, so it might rank a little higher in my scoring system because of the value. Uh, but uh, if I had to choose, I would probably take the Green River over the Evan Williams 1783, um, even for the money. I just like it better. And $35 is a great price point. This is a fantastic bottle. If you guys have not picked this up, you need to pick this up. We're going with a 3.3 for Green River. Bar-worthy bottle all day long. Uh, when these hit uh, your markets, you want to make sure that you grab some of these. Really, really good. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this review. If you do, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you've had Green River and what you think. And if you want anything more on Whiskey Tornado, go to whiskeytornado.com. Love and appreciate you guys to death. We will see you on the next review. Cheers, everybody.